disaster for Steve Carell fans the world over. Tied two rounds to two with the champ in the fifth, his choice to go for late takedowns would cost him the crown. Is this one of the biggest title fight blunders in MMA history? And what else happened at 301 and what does it all mean? So much to discuss, let's talk about it. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point. A massive thank you to our channel Hall of Famers for helping make these videos possible. And the challenger fumbled that one at the last second. Before we dive into all that pain, we should probably make sure you all know what happened on the card, so let's run it down. Alessandre Pantoja retained the bantamweight title via unanimous decision in a hard-fought bout with Steve Ursek. Jose Aldo ran a clean 30-27 sweep on Jonathan Martinez. Anthony Smith subbed Vitor Petrino for a huge upset win in just two minutes' time. Michelle Pareda made quick, potentially illegal work of Ihor Potieria with a backflip and 54-second submission victory. And and to kick off the main card, Kayo Bahayo put Paul Craig out cold in the second round with a big left hand. The prelims had a few performances and wild moments worth looking into and a dock stoppage I'd rather forget about for the rest of my life. All right, so now that we're all on the same page about what happened last night, let's run the numbers on this thing, shall we? The UFC's 12th visit to Rio saw 13 fights with four KOTKOs, two subs, seven decisions for a total cage time of two hours, 24 minutes, 56 seconds. A massive night for favorites, 11-1 on the night, just two underdogs prevailed, both OGs, Aldo and Smith. Lionheart winning via first round sub was plus 2,500. My goodness, I doubt many people had money on that, but if they did, they're lucky. With Pantoja's victory, he becomes the first flyweight champion to have two consecutive successful winning title defenses in the division since Demetrius Johnson. That was the 22nd WEC UFC victory for the King of Rio. Only two fighters who have ever beat him were not UFC champions, and Marab will probably remedy that in the very near future. In his 57 career fights, with 15 submission finishes, that was the first time Anthony Smith has successfully finished a guillotine choke, earning him our Diamond Hot Sauce Award. All of Michelle Pareda's last three wins have been first round stoppages, taking an average of just 61 seconds. 31-year-old Kayo Bahayo moved to 16-1-1, he hasn't lost since 2015, he's never been finished, and he's on six straight in the UFC earning him our primetime award. All right, enough stats, they can only paint part of the picture. Let's talk about what really happened here. Man, Ursek's post-fight interview hurt. You could just see the disappointment on his face. You could tell he was devastated that he came up short when he was right there. And he truly looked fantastic in this fight. You could easily argue that even without the fifth, he possibly should have won that one on the cards. There's absolutely no shame in a performance like that, especially against the best guy in the entire division. And mind you, the dude had only had three UFC bouts before the title fight, and one of them was against a guy without a Wikipedia page, and he still took Pantoja to the limit. Here's the thing about watching mixed martial arts, or honestly sports in general. Such a unique moment, and that universal pain that fans feel in seeing an athlete do something that ends up costing them everything at the worst possible moment, makes for some of the all-time greatest lore in sports. I don't watch baseball, but I know all about Buckner missing that ball in the 86 World Series, and unfortunately for Steve Ursag, he had one of those moments last night. At least, that's the general consensus. I've truly never seen this many people agree on the exact same thing. And it wasn't just the online voices. Daniel Cormier brought it up in the post-fight interview with Steve. Everyone was in agreement that the late takedown attempts in the fifth round cost him the fight. This feels very much like Chris Weidman's failed spinning kick against Luke Rockhold, or maybe Chael's spinning back fist against Anderson Silva in the rematch. Very specific pinpointed decisions that directly led to the loss. Now, Ursak did not know that he was two and two on the judges' cards when he was fighting in the fifth, but he stated after the fight that he thought if he took the fifth, he might be able to win the fight. And given his success on the feet and his inability to take down the champ or have any substantial control time at every other point in the fight, it seemed not the best decision to go for those takedowns, leading to Pantoja earning more than half the fifth in control time and squashing Steve's title hopes in a round it felt very much like he could have 
have won if he just stayed standing. It certainly felt like a case of, and the commentary team pointed this out as well, that the lack of high level experience ended up costing him. Poor decision or not, it is what it is. He made it. All the potential is there, of course, for him. This feels very much like it could end up being a GSP Hughes 1 situation, where Urseg is just not quite there yet, but by the time he gets another title challenge, he'll have put it all together. Not to mention, those 25 minutes last night were a crash course in top tier mixed martial arts. If Pantoja can hold off the rest of the division, I'd be excited for a rematch with gold on the line whenever it comes around. All right, let's wrap up our discussion of UFC 301 by talking about everything else. Jose Aldo looked fantastic out there, and now that his UFC contract is up, I suspect we're going to see the King of Rio in the boxing ring next. I would be shocked if he re-ups with the UFC or does MMA anywhere else. It's either boxing or nothing, I suspect, but if for some reason he does come back to the UFC, there's clearly room for him to be there still, just maybe not at the very top of any of the divisions. Anthony Smith, man, I mean, what can you say? Petrino decided to go for that takedown and Smith capitalized on it like the veteran that he is. It was a fantastic victory. The man seems hell-bent on continuing his career, and while he's had a rough run as of late, a big win is a big win, and he will fight on, and he should. Overall, this card felt like a really, really great fight night. Like, if this was just your typical Apex show or something, preferably they'd be somewhere with a crowd, of course, but you know what I mean, just a run-of-the-mill show, I'm sure everybody would have been like, wow, this really delivered from top to bottom. Lots of great action all around, it was well-paced, it was a great night, but as a pay-per-view, as something that the promotion expected fans to pay $80 for, man, I have to imagine this is going to be among the lowest selling shows ever. I suspect many of you watching this video right now are in part doing so to find out kind of what happened and what were the important takeaways. I mean, on top of the lackluster offering, there was a Canelo fight and the NBA playoffs. Yeah, I can't imagine too many folks forked up for this one. And look, 300 was this big spectacle of a show with nearly every fight being a potential fight night main event at the least. So I understand that some of these events are going to be a bit lesser as a result of that. But yeah, regardless of how well this one turned out, as a pay-per-view offering where you need to make that decision beforehand, not the best the UFC has ever given us. But we got a big one with 302. Obviously, 303 is going to be a huge deal. There's that big UK card coming up. John Jones is out there talking crazy about who knows what opponent, but he confirmed that he's got a return date, so that's coming up. So yeah, great actual card, shitty on paper, but there's a lot of huge stuff coming up on the horizon, so it is what it is. On to the next one. But what do you guys think? Is it fair to say that Urseg cost himself the title, as seems to be the consensus everywhere online? What did you think of the show as a pay-per-view offering? Did you watch it, or are you catching up right now? Do you want to see Jose Aldo box? Tell me all your thoughts about anything and everything. I love reading up on your guys' thoughts after these cards, and I read every single comment, at least for the first few days. A gigantic shout to Max Randall for the incredibly speedy edits on these autopsies. The man is a legend. It's amazing what he does, so give him a follow on his socials, and check out his awesome YouTube channel. A massive thank you to our channel Hall of Famers. Your support is so greatly appreciated by everyone here. Guys, you can be a Hall of Famer too, and get exclusive content by pushing that join button right now, but liking and subscribing would be great too, and you'll be one of the first to see these post-show videos when they drop. Thank you so much for watching. We are on to the next one.